What is up everyone, it is Doug with Retro Geek Gaming here to bring you another video discussion. Let's jump right on ahead, because in case you can't tell by the title of the video, we're finally going to talk about the Nintendo Switch features that I want to see. Now this is a two-fold kind of thing, because there are some things that we already know that the Switch is capable of doing. I mean, they showed it off in the video. They showed, you know, the controller going sideways, it moving around and being able to switch the way that you play. Some of the stuff, like I said, has already been shown, but there still are quite a few things that isn't 100% sure, sure at this point, you know? Um, <clears throat> there is no certainty with this system just yet as far as, you know, like we can get a sense as far as power goes based upon the game that they showed running on it, but we don't know for sure again what games exactly are coming. We're not sure 100% as to what kind of capabilities we're talking about as far as online and all this stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and do a video now about some features that I want to see with the Nintendo Switch. Just kind of in general, you know, online features, system capabilities, stuff that I would like it to be able to do. And you're always welcome to post down in the comments below what you think the Nintendo Switch should do, what you would like to see. So I'm going to try and keep this as realistic as possible. I'm not going to try and go anything too insane, but um, let's go ahead and get started with this video. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to say this first because to me it's probably the most important feature that this system needs, despite everything else that it might do, and everything else we have seen it do, and everything that I would discuss in this video that it could potentially do, I think the biggest thing that the Switch needs is online. And I mean decent online. Similar to, you know, PS4. Like, this thing needs to be super simple to use. No complicated backward stuff like what the 3DS had with friend codes. Although it was really just a friend code, but you added people, that friend code identified you, and then if you got a new system, you had to get a new friend code to give to everybody else. It should just be a simple, simple thing, like what it was with the Wii U, kind of, where you just have a user identity, but it's not attached to a Miiverse and a system. It's one unified thing to where if you do have a Miiverse account, that is your account. It goes with you. So... If, by chance, my Switch, for example, stops working, and I get a new Switch, I just simply punch in my credentials, you know, my email, uh, social network, whatever they choose to use to then bring my identity over. It's no different than what Microsoft does with Xbox Live, no different than what Sony does with their online network, where... You just simply sign in with one unified username. <clears throat> and I think that that will make things a heck of a lot easier than wondering what's going to happen with my friends list. You know, my contact list from the 3DS if I buy a new 3DS. Well, you lose it. You know, you can bring the games over, you can bring the licenses over, but you get a, a different friend code. It just needs to be a username, no numbers, uh, similar to what the Wii U did, but make it one system instead of a Miiverse and a friend system. You know what I'm saying? Just a little bit easier. And while we are talking about online, like I said, this thing needs to be as super easy as possible when it comes to online. Make it just like, you know, at least my Xbox One has a regular headphone jack on the bottom, no adapter needed. But make this thing just easy to use. You know, again, you, you have a headset that's on the bottom of the controller, up at the top, wherever you put it, um, that you just use. And if you happen to be playing a game and a friend jumps in, you start talking to them. If they are online, you stop the game, hit the home menu, whatever, go bring that friend into a into a chat system, and you talk to them. You know, it needs it just needs to be simple. This needs to be easy to integrate, regardless of where you're at. Now, it will probably be difficult to do with the portable aspect. If you're not connected to, like, a, a Wi-Fi network uh, or something like that. But it could be done. You know, like, again, if I take this thing somewhere and I connect to Wi-Fi, I should still be able to chat. And if it has a camera built in, I should be able to do video chat if I want. You know, put Skype on this thing. I know that'll probably be difficult because Microsoft owns it, but still. Use something 
to allow us to be able to communicate with our friends and make it easy to communicate with our friends. No, ho, they have to be on the same game at the same time thing. Or, you know, if they're on the same game at the same time, they have to be in the same lobby as you for you to be able to even use voice chat. Because that makes it a little bit difficult, you know? It makes it a little bit easier if I'm playing, like let's just say for an example, Mario Kart 9, Mario Kart Switch, whatever you want to call it. <clears throat> let's just say I'm playing the next iteration of Mario Kart. And I sit here playing it, having a good time, enjoying the race, and I see that my friend, one of my friends has just come online. I should just be able to then real quickly, you know, start a chat with that friend if I want by hitting the by hitting the home button, pausing the game or whatever, um, or maybe even give it a voice command to you know have friend you know start chat or whatever, and that's it. We start chat like, hey, I'm I'm enjoying Mario Kart Nine right now. Like, oh cool, I just picked it up. Well, let me go ahead and just stop and wait for you and start a lobby, and then they just jump right in. It's just a simple. You know, it's, it should just be that simple. It should be a simple thing like what I'm doing on PlayStation now to where if I'm playing a game and I see that friends are online, I can just hit a certain button or whatever and invite them to join. It should just be really easy to integrate when it comes to that. I think one of the best things that Nintendo could do, I hate to say it because I've been kind of avoiding it for a long time because I don't want to keep having to spend more money than I already do. But Nintendo should probably get some kind of a premium account. Um, I know, I know, I've been enjoying playing games for free on my Nintendo systems for quite a while. But I think that in order for them to be able to do the stuff that they do, you know, to be able to do all the stuff that people want them to do, or they could offer maybe discounts on games, or maybe even a free game, um, <clears throat> or to maybe do like they continue to do now with the coin system that they have set up from Matomo, where, you know, you earn points for doing things digitally or whatever, and then you can use those to get certain items. To continue to do that and keep it cost efficient, they should probably throw out a premium service. Now, they could probably still offer it for free for those people that don't want to use it. But I think that just like you have the option of PlayStation Plus, just like you have the option of Xbox Live, they should give you something that here's the benefits of being able to use this. You know, maybe you can have, you know, friend chats. Maybe you can have more people join a chat room. Maybe you can get free game discounts. The sky's the limits with how they want to be able to do this. Maybe because you stay with them for, you know, a year or something like that. Every year they give you some kind of a gift. Something. You know what I'm saying? I'm sure they can figure it out. They're pretty smart over there at Nintendo. But at the same time, I think it's a necessary evil. It's something that I don't want. But I think that at this point, they need to do it to be able to, in order to stay competitive. To be able to keep, you know very strong servers for people to jump in all the time to be able to know you know they can keep doing like they did with Splatoon where they can come out with maybe beta tests to test the network but to make sure that they have the bandwidth to be able to hold more people than they expect or to you know to, to be able to do the stuff that most people want them to do I'm sure they probably have to be able to pay servers and they probably have to pay people to program this stuff and it'd probably be best if they have a premium service on top of it. Hopefully it's not too expensive like Sony and Microsoft are now, but it can probably be something reasonable. Now it's just me, but I think something that would really, really help the Switch is an integrated system. Or uh, an interface, if you will, this whole umbrella. Uh, it's very difficult for me to explain, but think about it like this. When Matomo was out and, you know, the big thing that people played, <clears throat> they had coins that you could get. And those coins came from doing various actions, such as, you know, going to the shop every day to change your clothes. One of the options was to also link up your Nintendo Network ID. Another option was to be able to check the Miiverse once a week. And you got coins for doing this. And I think that this would be something that would be really neat to do, is to have the Miiverse go with you. There's an official Miiverse app, you know, that you use 
to stay connected on Miiverse with your friends, to chat about, you know, hey, when I get home tonight, why don't we play Mario Kart, Smash Brothers, what, you know, put whatever game title in there that you want. You know, even if it's a Call of Duty, let's go home and play Call of Duty on the Switch tonight. You know, like, to be able to chat with people like that, to be able to add people, you know, and then maybe everything could be set up and ready. Like, this would be a cool little thing to where maybe it can work hand in hand with mobile. To if you're on your phone on the way home, you know, or you're waiting for your friends to get home, you go ahead and you start sending out invites to people while you're at work. And, you know, you have all your friends ready to, it's like, okay, I'll be home in 10 minutes. And then you leave, that room is still there. So that way when you get online, you're ready to go. They're already in there. You just got to log in and go. And you can start playing almost immediately. Not having to wait for them. Everything gets set up and everything like that. And I think it would be also helpful since we know that we have games, like I think Animal Crossing, they said, was coming to mobile, to have it work hand in hand. Or maybe there's a Animal Crossing coming for the Switch that works with the mobile version somehow, that maybe they cross over, characters cross over, people that you meet in one can show up in another. You know what I'm saying? Kind of give it that same functionality like what Wild World did to City Folk, but that was very limited. That was very small scale, bringing your stuff back and forth between the games. But on like a larger scale, like we're talking about like if somebody's playing on the mobile version in my house, they can connect to my town on the Switch and we can just play together on different screens, you know? <clears throat> or um, if they do use augmented reality, maybe they can do something with Pokemon Go, you know, for example. Um, just basically working back and forth within the mobile market, because I really think that Nintendo is using the mobile market as their portable now. You know, I mean, it makes a ton of sense how they have games like, again, Pokemon Go, Matomo, they have... Uh, Super Mario Run coming. I think they announced that Animal Crossing was coming. They are clearly focusing on a mobile market at this point, so it would make sense for them to make that the portable. And the Switch is the console with portable capabilities that works hand-in-hand -hand with it. You know, again, think about it sort of along the lines of what was shown off when it was known as uh, that video, the Nintendo Cross, that I talked about. About how they showed somebody, I think, controlling... Um, Mario Kart using a, using a tablet or something. Something along those lines. Because it wouldn't take very much for somebody to simply use the controls to hold down one button, you know, in the corner to go. Meanwhile, they're navigating like this. Or they're actually steering with the actual device if it has motion built into it. It wouldn't... It would be basically the exact same thing as playing it with a Wii Wheel. Or with, you know, the... Um, the what, what is it? Um... The gamepad, but also the, um, I can't think about it right now. But anyway, it, it would be no different than, than, than playing with it like that. But, I think that, that would be a really cool option. Something else that I want to see them do, like I already kind of talked about, is VR and AR. And I know that some people, they're probably tired of hearing that. Um, you know, it's something that's been beaten to death a lot, especially with PlayStation VR. People are talking about, well, what's Microsoft going to do? Um, but I think that it is something that Nintendo needs to focus on, especially interesting ways to incorporate it. For example, something that I talked about uh, in a video earlier on, I don't remember exactly when I talked about it, but I believe there was rumors that the Switch was going to use AR. And I thought that was really cool because maybe it can do something like, again, connect to maybe Google Maps. And, it, you know, you can take your street and outline it to it turns it into a track and then you can make custom tracks and all that stuff. Um, if you're if you're using your device to walk maybe somehow, you know, it follows you through satellite or whatever to make something like there's all kinds of neat ways this could be done. And I'm th and I'm instantly thinking of stuff like what the three DS did with AR, with like the AR games, and Face Raiders, and Spirit Camera, and just all those games that used AR augmented reality stuff, it could be really neat. And then to apply that also with VR, imagine if they combined both, for example, like what I was talking about, kind of like with the Fatal Frame idea, but more in your house, like you're actually walking through your house with the Switch on a VR set, and stuff just pops out from the corner. 
of your, of your door frame or whatever. And this game, and you're playing with Joy Cons, and you're walking through your house, and your house is the game because it's using augmented reality to throw stuff at you. And it's just like, man, this would be really, really neat. Um, sort of like using System Flaw for the DSi, but more in a virtual reality world where you're actually looking around and seeing the stuff come at you. I think it could be really, really neat, a really neat application, but we'll have to see what Nintendo does if they even use VR at this point. Personally, I think that it would be interesting to have full backwards compatibility. I know that that's kind of difficult since we know that they're getting cartridges, but digitally. Because I was thinking about it like, okay, so the Joy-Con controllers, when held side by side, basically function like Wii Remotes. Let's face it, they basically function like Wii Remotes. And if you put the tablet portion with the Joy-Cons on the side, it basically looks like a Wii U gamepad. And while right now it would be very, very difficult for some games, because there are some games like Zombie U and Nintendo Land that put different displays on the screen, like one is on the bottom, one is on the TV. But for certain games, they only use one screen. Bayonetta is a good example of that, uh, that just, you know, puts what's on the bottom up at the top, um, and vice versa. However, this comes back to what I was talking about for neat features, I think it would be if they can make this thing cheap enough, I would love to see them be able to sell different things. Like what I was talking about before with the mobile capabilities, maybe you can connect this somehow to a phone. Like maybe they come out with a husk where you slide the controllers down onto the side and you put a tablet in there or you put your own um, phone in there and now you can play Wii U games digitally like Nintendo Land using the motion of your, of your phone and stuff like that. It would be a really neat thing. It would have to be digital since they are using cartridges, but I would love to see this thing be full backwards compatible. Uh, we're talking Wii U games, Wii, GameCube, all the way back to the NES. Heck, you can even throw Game & Watch games in there. I don't care. Um, you know, just go nuts with this thing. I think that it would be really difficult for me to sit there and say, well, you know, just sell different tablets because I understand that the Switch is the tablet. Like, let's face it, it is the tablet. That is the thing, that's what holds the the uh, the cards, that's what holds the controller, that's what you plug into the dock in order to make it go to the TV, that is the console. But, at the same time though, I would like to see it. Um, I would love to be able to see the tablet connect instantly uh, to people. You know, similar to what Street Pass did with 3DS, but that was a little bit unreliable sometimes because if you had stuff that blocked it or unless they were like directly touching, sometimes Street Pass didn't go through. But if I'm walking around with the Switch and I'm sitting down and somebody enters the room, there should be an instant notification that there's another Switch user nearby and all that stuff so that way we can meet and maybe exchange information you want to exchange. Sure. You know, think about it like, what is it now with Matomo, they had like a face-to-face -face option for adding people. Something like that, I think, would be really cool. You bring your me over. Yes, I want there to still be me's. I think that'd be a neat feature. They really need to redefine it so you can like tweak it. Like we're talking about, like PlayStation Home type of tweaking. You know, like every little single detail. Um, not too crazy, of course, but you know, just more detail than what you get with the basic we edit me editor. Um, but what I'm getting at. It's sort of like how Matomo did it with the face-to-face -face options, you know, where um, you see that there are two people that are playing Switch, you know, they're, you know, Mies enters like some kind of plaza or something like that. They say hi and you want to add, then you, you know, the Bluetooth or whatever, they send the communication to each other. Now you're friends, because the hard drive is right there, so there should be no excuse to be like, hey, we'll do this when we get home. No, it's... Right here, it's instant, and then I can go home instantly, pop that thing in, and again, maybe do voice chat, and be like, hey, what's up, I haven't seen you in like three hours, but, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, like, some, some, some neat applications I think could really be used with this, depending upon what the Switch does. But that's just a little bit of what I would like to see outside of games. Um, we already saw some things where, again, you know, 
because it has a stand in the back. You sit there and you just keep playing either with the Joy-Cons or you play with the controller. I love the fact that you can play it completely with the Pro Controller if you want. To a basically you can just say the heck of this. You don't even need the dock. Just like have it docked right there in your thing and just play all the games. Or if you do decide to dock it to have it charging, you just have it sit there. It's really cool how they're doing it. But I would like to see, again, just more functionality out of it. Maybe, depending on how long you want to support the 3DS, maybe have this work with the 3DS. I don't know. Because you're not really clear about your, port about your portable market. The Switch kind of is a portable, but it, it really is more of a home console designed to be on the go if you wanted it to be. So I think that you're focusing more on the mobile being your your um, your portable, but at the same time you're still supporting the 3DS into 2017. So I don't know, but time will tell on this. Again, I can't wait till January when they show this thing off. I really can't. Um, so that way maybe we can get, again, just full-blown features as far as how this thing works. I want it to have a brilliant user interface that's just super simple. You know, it doesn't have to be anything like the Wii or the Wii U level where it's just like you just simply tap, you know, and it gives you the different icons. It can be like the PlayStation 4 where, you know, everything in, you know, allow you to make photos so you can put stuff however you want. Um, it can be like the Xbox One in which everything's right there in the front and you, you know, scroll down or scroll left or right to be able to see more stuff. I'm really interested in seeing how they're going to do it. Um, as long as it's just easy and you have the game, I think you're going to get an instant hit. But we'll see. I really don't like the people that whine about it not being backwards compatible to the Wii U because you kind of knew that they were going to talk. They, they were talking about going back to physical cartridges anyway, and it makes a ton of sense because with a disc you're locked, and then it has to load unless you do like the three uh, the Xbox One in which you put part of it onto the hard drive. But if you think about what they could do with the cartridge, I mean, sure it might be a little bit more expensive to be able to get like a 64 gigabyte cartridge, but for someone out there who might want that, you know, and, you know, again, use a 64 gigabyte cartridge to really put this game on there and really, like, just, mmm, then that could take some of the processing power out of the system to be able to make it do more. I still like the idea of what I was talking about before, about having the dock be the thing that makes it, like, again, it just mirrors it. But maybe there's a dock that allows it to go to 4K, you know. Um, <clears throat> time will tell. But that's just my two cents, guys. I've been babbling on way too long about this, and I apologize. I just wanted to shoot some ideas that I had about the Nintendo Switch features that I would love to see. Uh, I think I pretty much covered all my bases with it. I may have missed something. If so, feel free to put it down in the comments below. I'd love to have a discussion with you about it. Otherwise, thanks for joining me for this video. As always, I'm going on 23 minutes. That is way too long for a video. I'm sorry. Sorry for babbling on about it. But thanks for joining me, as always, guys. Make sure you follow me on Twitter, if you like, at RetroGeekGaming, where I try to post stuff uh, before I do this. This was kind of an impromptu video. Um, and uh, have a discussion with you guys, if you ever want to just, you know, shoot me a message. And also, again, discuss stuff down below. Um... Like this video if you want, it doesn't really matter. Feel free to subscribe since I make videos once a week. Appreciate you joining me. I'll see you guys next time. Have a good one. Enjoy your weekend, and I'll see you next time.